Hello everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Davide Cimbri and I'm the early stage researcher number six within the Therapse project, a doctoral innovative training network focused on Therapse technologies for imaging, radar and communication applications. This project, which involves 15 researchers spread across all Europe, has received funding from the Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program and it is sponsored by the European Union. I'm originally from Italy, where I studied from the bachelor's degree in engineering physics and master's degree in nanotechnology at Politecnico di Torino. Then, I moved to Scotland, where I'm currently working at the PhD degree in electronics and electrical engineering at the University of Glasgow. In this short video, I'm going to briefly answer three important questions regarding my project research issue. What I'm working at why this is important for the community and how I'm going to contribute to it. The Terraps project focuses on the Terraps radiation. If you have a look at the electromagnetic spectrum, this radiation consists in the middle ground frequency portion that overlaps between millimeter waves and the far infrared range. And it's typically identified as those waves with frequency between 100 GHz and 10 terahertz, or equivalently, with wavelength between 3 mm and 30 micrometers. In simple words, Terrace radiation has intermediate properties between radio, microwaves and visible light. Several are the potential applications of Terrace radiation. Besides wireless communications and radars, Terrace imaging and spectroscopy can be used in the context of lots of practical scenarios, such as medicine, which can be used to perform, for instance, non-invasive analysis of tissues, biology, to study the effects of terrace radiation on biological material and molecules, or for DNA investigation purposes, industry, such as products inspections in the pharmaceutical, food and plastic sectors, chemistry and material science, security and defense, such as people screening, but also in natural sciences, atmospheric studies and astronomy, and even art, archaeology, and paleontology. In the context of wireless communications, Terrace radiation is attractive for both short and long-range applications, such as wireless local and personal area networks, devices to kiosks data transfer, smart cells, sixth-generation cellular networks, data centers, chip-to-chip -chip connections, and even space communications. During the last three decades, the way of consuming information in everyday life has enormously changed and there has been a tremendous boost of mobile data traffic and wireless networks of widespread diffusion, which are facing the unceasing demand increase for ultra-broadband multi-gigabit wireless communication technology. As it's possible to see from this graph, the amount of data required by wireless multimedia services has increased exponentially and faster than wirelines within the last 50 years, where gigabit per second and up to terabit per second links are expected starting from this year onwards. This empirical trend is predicted by the so-called Edom's law. So how terahertz radiation can benefit in terms of data rate? Let's suppose to have a carrier wave and to modulate it through an external signal. In principle, the higher is the carrier frequency, the higher is the allowed bandwidth associated with the communication channel, and so the amount of data that can be transmitted at a time, as can be seen in this graph. This is explained by the so-called shannon hartley theorem. Therefore, Terrace radiation will help in following Edom's law of bandwidth. This project is focused on resonant tunneling diodes. The RTD is a semiconductor-based electronic active device whose working principle is based on the resonant tunneling effect, which is governed by the laws of quantum physics. Thanks to an artificial structure called quantum well, the current voltage characteristic of the device exhibits a region of negative differential resistance. In this region, the current drops as the voltage is increased, contrary to common resistors. Thanks to this quantum mechanical effect, these diodes can generate very high frequency electrical signals. Despite that, the RTD itself is not enough 
to generate terrestrial radiation, but it requires the addition of other electrical components, which allow to realize a system called electronic oscillator. Although an RTD terrestrial oscillator is a complex system, it can be conceptually seen using a simple scheme. If an RTD device is integrated within a particular circuit configuration, the resulting oscillator is able to generate a terrestrial signal, which can be modulated to carry digital information. Then, if an antenna is connected to the output, the modulated signal can be emitted, realizing transmitters that are in principle capable of extremely high data rates. It has to be mentioned that these devices are prominent to be employed at the receiver side as well, since they are demonstrating to work very well as high sensitivity ultra fast detectors leading to the possibility to build up ultra-broadband RTD-based transceivers. Although these systems have proved to be able to generate very high frequency signals, they still suffer from practical issues. To explain the most crucial one, I will use a simple but effective analogy. Let's suppose you are speaking to an audience at a certain distance. If your voice is not loud enough, the audience won't hear your talk and no communication will take place, so that you will have to speak louder. The same applies in a wireless communication link context. If the RF power of the transmitter side is not high enough, due to space losses and receiver limitations, the information won't reach the receiver side. The issue is that, at the moment, the output power performance of RTD terrestrial oscillators is still limited and does not meet the requirements needed in practical application scenarios, preventing this technology to be employed on an industrial basis. This project has the aim of helping to increase the output power of these sources. To do that, both high power oriented device design, circuit fabrication, and high frequency characterization will be carried out taking advantage of simulation softwares, microfabrication facilities, and RF characterization equipment present at the University of Glasgow. And that's all folks. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to visit our website if you want to have more info about these and the other research topics. Watch the video presentations of the other ESRs and follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.